working with it so happy. How do you do there you go. <clears throat> so, um, Ada, who moderates our caregivers group, just created a new website, which is really interesting. It's called Months to Years, and it's kind of going to be a literary website on death and dying. Um, and uh, I will put the link. I didn't know about it. Rob mentioned it to Rob Beniscus. And uh, let's see. Okay. Send to everybody. So there we go. So there's there's um there there it is. That's that's uh. Put it up front. I'll take that. Up. That's the uh, there it is. That's the new website, and I, we wish her every luck with that. We are really honoured to to have her on our team. She's terrific. I'll, I'll check it out and then put a link to uh, link to it on our Facebook page too. Yeah, and, and let her know that you're doing that as well. Okay. And at some sure. point, we'll tweet her. Out. I mean, I'm not sure if she's ready. Just ask her. I would just ask her if she'd like us to do it because I don't know if she's actually ready for a for a full launch. I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay. Um, I think so. I know that she's been studying um, WordPress for quite some time, and so she obviously built it herself. And or they obviously, but she did build it herself. So there you go. All right. So. And I see Ed Pern just joined us. Ed is that we met at PCRI. So we'll be talking with him. Um, now, Dennis, I've got your books in the back of my car. We just have to figure, I'm actually running up right after this, but I won't have time to, <laughs> to meet you. But I am. <laughs> I, oh, oh, well, maybe you'll be interested in this. Um, so I recent, I just met a guy who lives down here in Tubac, who is a professor at the Integrative Medical Center, uh, the Integrative Medicine Center. We're, we're fortunate enough in Tucson to have a very good Integrative Medical Center that is was created by uh, Andrew Weil, who most people are familiar with, and um, he's kind of the father of integrative medicine. And um, it's part of the University of Arizona. And uh, so I met this guy. He's a specialist in sleep and sleep deprivation. And next Tuesday, he's doing a lecture on prostate cancer and sleep. So uh, you might be interested to attend that. I will find out. I, pretty, I think it's an open attendance. I will check with him. But it's at the uh, it's at the University Cancer Center, which is on Campbell, I think. Um, yes, it is. And uh, it's at two o'clock next uh, Tuesday. Maybe we could maybe we could even get lunch first. There's a concept. That sounds like that sounds like a good idea. All right. Well, I'll put it in my I'll put it in, and we'll talk between now and then. And these books that I got for you aren't going anywhere. Okay, <laughs> except to you. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So um forgive us for making plans whilst all of you are on the line, but otherwise I'll forget and it'll get crazy. Um so we have three people that are on the phone. Um maybe four. Um I think I saw Dennis come in again. Dennis well, um, just speak up for me so I can just see what number you're on. Yeah, I'm here, Rick. You got me? Oh, no, yeah, we have got you, so it isn't you. So we... I'm on, uh, I've also got your webcam on my computer, so I'm on the phone because I don't have audio on. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, you, got, you got us in stereo, okay. Um, so, um... It's Larry Fish on the phone. Larry Fish is number seven. You got you got that, Jake? Um, yes, I got it. Okay. 
And, Hello, Larry. And um, who else do we have on the telephone that hasn't um, hasn't spoken up yet? Anyone? This is Jim Cameron. Hold on a minute. Uh, so We're, I got you, Jim. Sylvester. Okay. Hi, Sylvester. Hello, everybody. Number six. Yep, got him. Got him. And um, anyone else on the telephone that would like to identify, or you're just welcome to audit if you prefer to do that? Or? Oh, this, is, uh, this is Ed Perney. This is my first uh, session with you guys, so glad to be here. Okay, number five. How do you spell your name, sir? Ed. It's Ed. P P E R. Yes, it's uh, P E R N E. P R. P E R N E. Okay. Okay. A oh, Perrine. Okay, got it. Thank you. No, P E R N E. Pern. Oh, Pern. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Now I got it. Okay, and 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 Eric Eric just joined us, so um, all right. So let me. Oh, I'm sleeping on the switch here. I'm not I'm not making notes. So I'm going to quickly make some notes. So we've got Jake and Jim Cameron. I got to tell you, it's been on my mind all day to to give you a call to see how you're doing. So I'm really pleased to hear. To hear your voice, and um, you can tell us how you're feeling, and momentarily. Okay. Um, okay, baby. Then this. Uh, uh, Eric. Jake Rookman. Uh, Eric. Um, Jake Rookman. Jim Cameron, uh, Joel Blanchett, John Affleck, Joel Blanchett, John Affleck, uh, Sylvester, Larry Fish. All right, so I'm going to do a roll call. And I think I've got everybody's name down here. If not, you'll let me know. Um, okay, so we got Jake, we've got Peter Kafka, we've got Betty and Richard, Dennis Career, Ed Pern, Eric Bookbinder, Jay Kruckman, Jim Cameron, Joel Blanchett, John Appler, Sylvester Mann, and Larry Fish. Did I miss anybody? Okay, so we'll get we'll get cracking with with Ed Pern. Ed, um, we typically like to welcome um, new callers uh, by giving them some preferred time up front, so they can talk a little bit about their situation and their diagnosis uh, and any questions that they might have for us. Um, Ed and I met briefly at. DRI in um, in Los Angeles, and um, and we've been we've corresponded a little bit since then. So I have just a, a smattering of background. Um, so Ed, are you comfortable with um, with telling us a little bit about your situation and, and introducing yourself to the group? Sure, sure. Thanks for having me. First of all. Um, yeah, I was, let's see, I'll start with my uh, diagnosis. I was uh, diagnosed when I was 50 back in 2011, and I was on active surveillance for six years. And then uh, recently in February, uh, the biopsy came back a little more aggressive. And so um, it had grown all the way to uh, a stage T, uh, 3TB. And so, so far I've had, I had surgery in March. I um, followed up with radiation starting in early June, and that concluded in uh, July. And uh, I'm currently on two forms of hormones, uh, Lupron and then also Zytiga. And um, so far, uh, side effects have, haven't been uh, too bad. Um, 
handling that well. And the uh, so far the test results on the PSA are very positive, uh, basically non-detectable at this point, but um, obviously uh, due to the hormone usage, I'm sure. And uh, so but that's where I'm currently at. And just uh, I have decided also uh, to take some time away from work. I know I was corresponding with Rick on that matter. I'm not sure how everyone else treats that, but I just thought there was an opportunity. That's what I would do. So I'd take the next year off just to uh, kind of focus on my health and make sure things are maintained while I go through um, the continued treatment with hormones. Um, and let's see. A little bit about myself. I, right now, I'm 56, uh, almost 57, living in and living in Redondo Beach, and uh, everything else is good. But if anyone had, has any comments on how they handled their work situation when they were diagnosed, if uh, there's something comparable you could share with me, uh, that would be appreciated. Where um where who are you? Where are you being treated, and who did the surgery? Uh, surgery was, uh, well, initially I was at a, um, a different uh, a medical group in, in Torrance, California, and then when things kind of took a turn, um, I had turned to City of Hope, and so City of Hope did the surgery. I guess that was back in March, and uh, right now I'm uh, being treated by Do uh, Dr. Turner at uh, Prostate Oncology Specialist in Marina Del Rey. Uh, and actually, I, I kind of I see both. I I, I like both of the um, uh, the treatment options there, City of Hope and Prostate Oncology Specialist. So uh, I um, I keep them both involved. Uh, the more information I can have, the more feedback, the better. So. And and you did your radiation also at City of Hope. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That was at uh, uh, 21st Century. Uh, oncologist, and that was in uh, El Segundo, California, but that was referred through Dr. Turner uh, at Prostate Oncology Specialist. Okay. Okay. So, um, so you're not the only person that uses a combination on this call. I'm sure Peter will will uh, talk to you a little bit about that too. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm curious about is what do you recall? Back when you were diagnosed in 2011, what your um, your uh, disease demographics were, what your Gleason was, and what, what when you when you chose proactive surveillance? Yeah, it was um, the PSA was probably around five or six, and the Gleason was a six at that time. And then uh, gradually, the I had some different procedures to keep an eye on it, and it remained at a Gleason six for a long time. Uh, the PSA did creep up uh, to ten, and then a little bit over ten, and then there was just a bump in the Gleason to a Gleason seven at the time I had the uh, biopsy last February, mm -hmm. and the PSA at that time it was a thirteen before the surgery, so it was a thirteen and a Gleason seven when I went in. Now was that a three plus four or a four plus three? It was a three plus four. Mm -hmm. And how much of it was four? Oh, do you recall? Good, good question. I'd, I'd have to go back and, and look. I can't remember specifically. I was looking the other day, but I don't have a figure for you. And what what made them um, what made them uh, stage you as a T3? I, well, it, it had uh, escaped the prostate, obviously, and then it had gone into um, the sem uh, seminal vesicles, okay. and then a little piece of it had um, drifted to the, I guess, the bladder neck. Okay. And I think that's what caused that. Okay. 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 So um, I, I'll throw it open. Peter might want to talk about combining, and and also, and it's not a subject we often talk about. So I think it might be good to spend a few minutes on it if people want to talk about it. Is the decision whether to keep working or or 
or not to keep work. Um, Ed had just written to me and asked me about my own diagnosis, and I chose I chose to stop working um, full time, largely because I wanted to just reduce the stress as much as I could. And um, I live on my own. It was easy enough for me to do because I don't have a very expensive lifestyle. Um, and I had also promised Ed that um, I would just tell him what my diagnosis was. It was four plus four. I was staged T3A by Shinohara in uh, UCSF after an initial staging of T1C. And I did a combination of um, IMRT for pelvic girdle uh, radiation plus uh, seeds for the gland. And then I did uh, 28 months of hormone therapy. Um, and uh, after I was all done, um, it took about a year for my PSA to settle down. It rose for several months before declining. And after about uh, 18 months, um, it was, um, it was, close to insignificant and it's just gone down ever since or it stayed low so, so that that was that was my story um so let, let me throw it open anybody want to talk about jeff turner and, and oh. go ahead what is his psa now uh psa now is non-detectable on lupron and zytiga And how many I'm months sorry. on that? On uh, Zytiga, uh, going on, let's see, when did I start? It's been, I think, about two months. And are, they, are they monitoring monthly or PSA? Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, right now it's kind of in flux. It was um, uh, three months. And uh, this month, I, I will have had three different uh, visits, two to uh, a prostate oncology specialist, and then I just had one on the 13th at City of Hope. But uh, overall, yeah, it, it's going to be a, a three-month check-in, I believe. Uh, I just, you know, that's the, the warning is you keep, keep watching it. If it starts yeah. going up, then you have to take some action. Right, right. Ed, Ed, how long did you go between surgery and, and radiation? Uh, let's see. Um, it was about, I'll say, my, uh, about two and a half months. Wow. Okay. Well, that, yeah. that's... Peter, that's because obviously when 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 they did the um, the post-operative pathology, they could see that there was um, there was cancer in the seminal vesicle, in the seminal vesicles and in the bladder neck. So um, as soon as he had healed enough, which which is fairly normal when they see that, as soon as he was healed enough, then they they just scheduled adjuvant radiation. But but they didn't remove the seminal vesicles at that time, huh? During surgery. Sure, they did. Uh, they did. Yeah, okay. they did. Yeah. Yeah, and they were they were kind of on the fence about that the radiation um, so quickly. But um, uh, to Rick's point, it was just you know I was I was feeling fine and I just didn't see any reason to wait. Um, it just seemed to be an opportune time to get in and, and try to continue the treatment. To, try to get some good results so well this this is an interesting discussion i i live in maui i too have dr turner I, I, I consulted him right off the bat before i had my surgery and radiation my my situation is a little more aggressive but but as as uh rick and i know we, we are i'm working with a, a friend here and uh, and we had some discussion about uh, low-grade so-called Gleason 6 um, and it's uh, you know my attitude is you know prostate cancer is prostate cancer I know Gleason 6 is 
often something that's um, you know let go because it'll supposedly never never uh, metastasize and never grow. But with a rising PSA, it's a, it becomes a different story. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think you've made good good moves, good decisions, and you're in good hands. Um, it's a tricky disease, though, and it hits it's, it hits every one of us a little bit differently. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where you know just monitoring it consistently, as you all know, is is, is really a key. So. Uh, we'll continue to do that, and hopefully, it'll maintain for a while. Ed, how often? Um, how often did you uh, do your biopsies between 2011 and 2017? Uh, in a total of six years, I think I had four mm -hmm. over that span. Mm -hmm. And and was that with the local urologist in in Torrance, or was that with um, more more sophisticated equipment? No, I was a local urologist in Torrance. It was a needle biopsy, right? And right. it was basically uh, January of um, 2016. Uh, everything seemed still to be pretty normal with the Gleason and. It didn't, it still didn't seem to be very aggressive, but you know, obviously it's a hit and miss with the needle biopsy, and I think that's right. really what happened. Right. And so a year, a year later, you know, it uh, was just a different story. Um, right. Right. And I guess that needle biopsy, uh, we uh, took it from the right spots this time around, and it told a different story. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, P Peter. I mean, in, in my view, this this is a pretty different situation to your fellow in in um, uh, in Maui. Um, in that, uh, I mean, the reason that 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 obviously that Ed's getting uh, hormone therapy right now is because of what was seen on the um, on the on the postoperative pathology. Um, whereas your guy's getting, um, uh, he's getting, uh, hormone therapy on the basis of a Gleason 6, um, and, and no evidence of, of, of any spread. Um, you know, I think, you know, the question is, should, should, um, should Ed have had hormone therapy if he would have been with Jeff Turner? Would Jeff Turner have given him hormone therapy? Um, when he was still at least in six, well, he certainly wouldn't have recommended him for surgery. That that we know. Um, yeah. And um, and probably what he would have done is is had different type of screening used. And and I think probably the issue, as Ed rightly says, is that the sophistication level of the screening just wasn't sufficient. And we know that now, but you know, back you've also got to remember that back in 2011, um, we were only just starting to to look at fusion biopsies. So, um, I mean, it, it was quite hard to get an MRI fusion biopsy, and only the only the best centers were were doing it. Right, agreed. That's good. Here, it's, there's no option for it. I mean, the, the, the urologists here won't even go that direction because they don't do uh, multi-parametric MRIs. And, 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 you know, my friend here, Turner, Turner immediately sent him for a, 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 a multi-parametric MRI and also right in the office did, a, did an ultrasound and, and he was diagnosed as extra, you know, extra capillary extension. Um, whether it's gotten into the seminal vesicles, I do not know. But he's, he's diagnosed as, as, as ECE at this point. So I, I don't. I, I think I thought, that's a. Yeah. Just, I, I thought he was diagnosed. I thought it was just pushing up against the wall, and it was close. So, to but his wife, his wife sent out something and said he was diagnosed as ECE. Uh, okay. Okay. So anyway, but uh, it's a. 
you know, it's a touchy thing. I, I've got another friend who, you know, similar similar situation who needs to get a biopsy really soon too. But and his and his doctor here won't won't go near uh, send, sending him to get a um, a multiparametric MRI. It's crazy. So it's uh, but it, I'll see they're here or there. Uh, Ed, are you st you're still working, so you've got good insurance, I'm assuming, yeah? Actually, no, I, I've decided not to. My, my employer's been great, and uh, actually this, this week would be my last week. Uh, I've been on leave, and uh, the insurance actually is through my wife. She works for uh, L.A. County. Okay. So, um, yeah, it worked out beautifully from that perspective. Um, even with the, you know, the, as you know, the cost of the Zytiga and some of the other drugs, um, it really helped uh, minim minimize that impact. So thank God for that, you know. So you, so you're covered in terms of drugs, pretty, pretty good. You don't have big copay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it worked out very, yeah. very well. Yeah. Does, does anybody, would anybody like to talk at all about the decision of? As to whether you continue working or you you take a break um, when you get diagnosed, well, I would just say you know it depends on what the priorities are in your life. I mean, if you um, if you have something in your life that you're going to do when you're not working that's keep your life fulfilled, then then certainly it would be a good you know, it's a good time to do it. You, you know, your future future is now somewhat uncertain, and this will give you time to do. It. But you know, if it just means you're sitting around the house, that's probably not not the best idea. You know, um, I continued working. Luckily, they let me work from home. Um, so, and it does keep me involved and and help me keep my mind off you know the other things. So, um, you know, the circumstances determine a lot of it of, of what you're going to do. So. Each individual has to figure that out for himself. I mean, you know, Rick, you've made a life around um, helping people with prostate cancer, and mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Another okay. cancer. And I'm sorry, who is speaking? Eric Bookbinder. Oh, okay. Thanks, I think, thanks, Eric. I think he was speaking from a distant place. Is this true, Mr. Bookbinder? Yes, I'm sitting at in Puerto Vallarta. There you go. God bless you. <laughs> and we'll get, uh, we'll check in with you in a minute. But uh, I thought that we, I thought we had some, some, uh, some, some distant attendees today. Um. So, all right. Well, look, uh, Ed, did you have any other questions? If not, we'll, 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 we'll move along. I mean, we hope you, you keep coming back to us. You keep listening. Um, as you'll hear, there are guys with, at all stages of this disease um, on the call right now. Um, you know, don't be discouraged. Some of these guys are doing a heck of a job managing their disease, and, 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 and Eric is one of them. So, um, uh, you know, we, we'd like to welcome you back, stay in touch with us, and, um, and come on these calls as often as you would like. You may even want to. You may even want to uh, go on to Peter's call, the low risk call, and talk to the guys a little bit about um, about your experience with active surveillance, and because you certainly have some good words of advice for the, for them on that call too. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, no, definitely, no. I, I appreciate uh, being able to uh, be on the call today, and I'll I look forward to uh, joining future calls. So, right. thanks for the time. Right. Yeah. There's also there's also an excellent uh, talk uh, video talk by Dr. Chuck Ryan from UCSF about the subject of uh, low risk guys Gleason six uh, guys advancing all of a sudden kind of out of out of nowhere and getting into serious trouble. Um, it's a very heartfelt talk. It's it's worth looking at. And I'm sure you can just do a Google search for it. Okay, Chuck Lyon was the name. Yeah, Charles Charles, Charles, Charles Ryan. Ryan. Okay, thank you, Peter. If you if you have the link and you could post it in the chat box, that would be great. 
And I'm going to have to search for it. I'll, I'll see okay. if I can do it. All right. No worries. All right. So let me, um, I, I see somebody else joined. Somebody just joined us recently. Who, who was that? Somebody joined us by phone just uh, about five minutes ago or less. There's two people on. Right. Um, all right. Well, let, let, let me hey, go. Hey, Rick, Rick, that, was, that was me, Rick. John Apple, you filed back in. Sorry. Oh, you just dialed back in. So you're on number nine. Okay. Yep. We're, we're switching you to number nine. Um, I was expecting Professor Bill, but my guess is that he's taken a nap and hasn't woken up. Just a quick update for you on Professor Bill. He's been in the hospital for the last week with another urinary tract infection, um, which he gets repeatedly. And um, the good news is that he's out. He was in for about four or five days with some really vicious bladder spasms, which for anybody who's had kidney stone, you know how painful those are. And um, but we spoke to him earlier on today, and um, and he sounds pretty good. And he said he was planning on calling in, but um, I think he must have uh, probably probably fell asleep or something. So that's that that's fine. But we all wish him well, and um, I think he's back on the road to recovery again uh, from these from this infection. Um, so I'm just going to run down the list and see who would like some time today. Uh, Jake, anything for you? Um, no. I, I had an appointment with my oncologist on Thursday, but I haven't gotten my blood back, so I don't know if I have anything to talk about or not. Okay. Did I mean, did you not discuss anything with her about your about your um, yourself? Or, or that? No, she she lost her phlebotomist, so she was very busy. She was doing blood and going between three different patients. So no, we didn't talk at all. Although, guys, I mean that, that this is a good this is a good example of, in that it's it's it is really good if you can get your blood done before you see your doctor, and um, because that way you have a face to face discussion uh, with them subsequently um whereas jake i guess you'll talk with your doc um by phone right when she when she has the results if yeah if it's not any good yeah okay i'm hoping it'll stay the same as last month right right, right. <laughs> um okay peter anything for you uh no, I, I just have a maybe a, a blood work question. I got my lab results back, and I just have a question about it. Okay, okay. we'll come back to you. Um, Betty and Richard, anything for you? Nothing this week. Okay, good. We like nothing. Um, Dennis Career, anything for you? Uh, nothing other than just getting ready for my uh, flu cyclovine PET scan this coming Thursday. All right. Right, right, right. Um, Mr. Bookbinder, you want to give us a quick report when we when we come around um, on um, how you're feeling this week? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Um, Jay Kruckman, anything for you this week? Uh, just a quick update on some blood work and a question or two. Okay. Uh, Jim Cameron, I'm slotting you in because I, for one, want to hear how you're managing after your uh, first chemotherapy infusion. We'd be glad to fill you in. Thank you. Joe Blanchett, anything for you? Uh, no, nothing for me. Okay, thank you. John Appler, anything for you? Sorry, I, I say that again? Uh, nothing for you, Rick. Okay, thanks. Thanks, John. Uh, Sylvester, anything for you? Not this evening, thanks. Okay, Larry Fish, how about you? Uh, are you going to talk about the uh, the Pfizer uh, proposal at all? You mean uh, our grant proposal? Is that what you Yeah, mean? are you going to discuss that at all? No, I wasn't planning on it. 
Um, oh, okay. I was just a, a little interested in some details. Oh, okay. No, I mean, um, you know, uh, but we, I'm happy to talk to you offline about it. If, if, um, if All right. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, yeah. I'll, go ahead. Okay, you know, you know, I work as a, half my job is grant writing, so I no, didn't know we, what, where you guys were at at all. We <laughs> didn't know that, but we're very happy to hear it. So, um, well, I'll talk to you. I'll, maybe I'm leaving right after this, but um, I think I have your telephone number. If not, yeah, we'll talk another. We'll talk another time. I don't write medical grants, but I'm a successful grant writer in my field. I could usually be of help to people if, oh, yeah. depending on how sophisticated yeah. it is. A absolutely no. Um, Bill, uh, Professor Bill, who obviously has written many grants, is working on it together with Len. Um, All right, I'll, we can I'll talk about. It. We can just. We can run over it another time. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you. A, I'm going to be in the car for about an hour right after this, so I'll try and give you. A, I'll try and give you a buzz. Um, just uh, email, okay. email me uh, your 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 telephone number. I think I have it, but I'm not certain. And I'll yeah, I'm in the car. I'll be home in an hour and a half or so. I'll email you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So that's, that's good. We like that. Thank you very much, Larry. That could that's 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 great. Um, all right. Have I missed anybody? Has uh, anybody else joined us? I see one caller that just came in. Yeah, Rick. It's John and Sherry Streslick. Oh, hello, John and Sherry. We haven't heard from you for a while. No, I listened to after the fact, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd call in tonight. Welcome. Good to hear your voice. Well, we'll, we'll we hopefully we'll have enough time and we'll get through to you for a quick update on John. Um, okay. uh, Rick, I think I, I think uh, caller one might be Betty, and uh, I believe. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So let's start off with Peter and your blood work. Peter, talk to us. Okay, just to, I want to make a quick comment to John. John, I know John Appler. I know you're headed to California now, and probably you're sitting at the airport listening in. Um, I forgot to mention when I was at PCRI, um, radiation nurse Christine was was there for the Saturday sessions. Um, she's the radiation nurse at the um, at the. At the uh, or whatever you call it, the, the, um, the UCSF place down by uh, Mission Bay, Mission Bay Radiation, which is really up on all the uh, the radiation stuff going on at UCSF. And if you ever need someone to talk to about the differences between Mission Bay and Mount Zion and, um, and uh, Parnassus and so forth, just hop over there and, and, and see her. She's very bright and uh, Accommodating, and I had some good discussions with her about the difference in the facilities and the tech teams and so forth. So, put that information away while you're over there, okay? No, nope, well, here. Thanks, uh, Thanks. Really appreciate that. So, this, this is Eric. Um, I ran into her also, I, and uh, I ended up spending 24 hours in the emergency room like two hours, two weeks ago, or something like that. And uh, this person walked by and said, Oh, I I'd been to a prostate conference this weekend, and I said, oh, was that PCRI? And she said, yes. And then she said, oh, yeah. I, I told her to answer cancer, and she said, oh, I saw that contraption. That was great. I talked to Rick and all that. So um, it was pretty amazing that uh, she, yeah. that we both had all that in common. Yeah, she's a good person. You know, I spent quite a bit of time with her because I was there for three months. Anyway, but John, you know, just stop by if you're there and if you have any questions about the difference in the facilities. She she said that um, that uh, Dr. Roach does radiation in both places, both Mount Zion and uh, Mission Bay. He uses both facilities. So okay. yeah, is there, yeah, I, actually, I actually saw saw her at Parnassus. So she was up on Parnassus when I saw her. Yeah, she's moving around. So does um does that mean John that you're on your way to start your IMRT? That's that's correct. Rick. I'm on the plane right now. Okay. Well, good luck to you. You'll keep us posted. Thanks for your support. Appreciate it. Okay. 
that. Yeah, and um, you know, it's uh, one thing I would suggest is make if if you I think you have already seen Greta McCare, but if you if you if you have, give her a call. If you have not, make an appointment to see her whilst you're there, and talk to her about your diet during radiation. Yes, indeed. Seen her Friday at one o'clock. Okay, well, tell her I said hi for sure. Okay. I will do. Okay, thanks. Um, Peter, talk about yourself. Okay. <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> uh, um, I got my lab results. I did it at Prostate Oncology Specialist a couple weeks ago when I was there. Um, and uh, I had a question about the LH, the luteinizing hormone results, which came back high. Um, and this is the first time they've ever come back high. I did a little bit of research online um, about what that meant. And, and, it's, and it, it kind of implied that when you're 70 or older, and I just turned 70 a few months ago, that your luteinizing hormone can come back high. Um, and I, um, I was just uh, curious about whether anybody else tracks that or anybody else knows much about it. Um, and, uh, and what the significance of it is. The, the, re the reference range is 1.4 to 7.7 uh, milliliter M small L big U slash uh, M large L. So um, anyway, my, mine came back at 16.5, which was you know, more than double the uh, the upper range. And I just uh, was curious about. Uh, I I don't have. I mean, other than knowing that it it it's the LH and LHRH, I really don't know much about its significance. Are you um are you currently um on or are you uh, are you still on hormone therapy holiday, Peter? Holiday, yes. I have a, my last Lupron shot kind of expired in December, so I've been off almost a year. Now. Um, and and um, you know, I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering if that luteinizing hormone is impacted by whether you're on or whether you're off. And I also wonder whether um, its production is impacted if you go on and you go off. So. I don't know, but uh, you know, you're you're clearly you'll speak with Jeff Turner, and hopefully you can explain more to us about it. We need to learn about it. What what about your PSA and the and and your other results? Where, how's your PSA doing? That's that's doing pretty good. It's creeping up about uh, one hundred or two hundredths a month or so. So it's 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 in a good range. It's zero point zero eight now. I think it was zero point zero six. Uh, seven weeks ago or so. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. It's, it's you know, slow, slow creep I can live with. That's not too bad. Right, 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 right. So do you have a, do you have a plan in mind with Turner as to when you would go back on? Do you, have you set a, a number that? We haven't really set a number, but it, I, we talked a little bit about it, but yeah, I think it's got to go up around, around, uh, you know, Point, point five or something like that. You know, I've got a long way to go, I think, unless things start speeding up. That's great. Keep an eye. Right. Um, have you, um, you know, have you talked much about how you decide when to go back on? I mean, I know that in intermittent, that's always a huge question for men. You know, they go off, and then when do they go back on again? And for Len. Len is doing a, a, a meditative walk as we speak, but I know that Len certainly would have some some input on that on this one. I don't know. Right. Do we have anybody else who's on intermittent right now? No. I don't know. I I, I meditate on it when I'm walking, when I'm at the gym. I meditate on it all. <laughs> but I I've kind of come to the conclusion in my head that while I love the fact that I've got some testosterone back. I know I'm not going to be resisted when the time comes to go back on some kind of treatment. I, 
I know the alternative is is, is worse. Mm -hmm. um, and if it means if it means going to Zytiga this time or whatever, I'm I'm game for that. What whatever I need to do to manage this, because that's the game is management is it from this point out. And, and I'm okay with that. Well, you know, there there are people that can stay off for years, um, and then they go back on, and they drive it down, and they come back on again, and each time they get a little less time out of it. But God willing, you're going to be one of those people that can go on and off intermittent for uh, for a very long period of time. Yeah, I'm hoping. So. Um, all right. Um, so let's. Let's let's move on, Peter. Is there anything else before I leave you that you wanted to talk about? Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate, but uh, there's a couple of things I'll mention. Uh, I met with uh, Mike Tamales, um oncologist on Friday. I came back Thursday night, flew back from Canada, and then Friday morning got up early and, and met with Mike and his oncologist. He's um, I don't know if he'll come back on the calls or not. He can. He, but he's at the point where his oncologist feels his, his blood work is not suitable to even start or even try chemo at this point. So uh, we're at the point where we're talking to hospice and uh, his PSA jumped up about 800 points the last two months uh, each month. So he's in the 2100 range now. Um, and it's, it's a, the game is essentially um, pain management at this point. It's it's sad, but uh, he's he's hanging in there and he's he's uh, he's okay and uh, we're working with the best best we can. But I just want to mention that. Just keep him in your thoughts. And, uh, it's not not an easy time in the in the uh, in the journey. And, the, and along that score, I, I haven't been on the call the last couple of times, Rick. So I don't know if you mentioned about Paul Hobson, but uh, you know, I was very touched. You know, he's participated a lot over the years with us and had a very brave battle. And I guess he, he met his not too long ago. So uh, that goes out to his his family. No, I, thank you for raising that, Peter. Um, I haven't mentioned Paul. Um, I was kind of waiting until Jim Marshall gave us the high sign. Um, Paul asked that. Um, he just wanted to fade into oblivion, essentially. And so he stopped calling people um, about two weeks before PCRI. And um, nobody really knows if he's passed, if he hasn't passed. But that's exactly what he wanted. Uh, Jim Marshall said to me that um, it would be confirmed at some point. And when it was confirmed, he would tell us. Um, I will actually, I'll make a note to check in with Jim on that, um, but I haven't heard from him. But essentially, um, he kind of went downhill pretty quickly. Um, as you, most of you recall, he, he was taking the, um, he was in the Lutetian 177 trial in Australia, and he was always pretty, he was always very upbeat when he would call in. Um, but according to Jim, um, he became um, pretty depressed and very morose very quickly. And at that point, he sort of stopped communicating and he made it clear that um, he just didn't want to talk to anybody, including Jim um, and his and his Aussie buddies. So um, so we think he we probably lost him, but we we don't know. Who, you know what? what when we do, I'll certainly write it into our. Um, I'll write it into our uh, advance notice, and we, most of us think remember it very fondly because um, he was he was so committed and he was so helpful, uh, and as committed and helpful as he was to us, he was hugely hugely helpful to Jim Marshall because he used to he would moderate that Australian. Uh, blog he would largely moderate that australian blog so so that's that score so unless anybody's heard anything has got any more information than i have that that's pretty much all i know um okay and mike tamales most of you know mike um 
and just a you know deep debt of gratitude to Peter for helping him so significantly through his journey over over the past two or three years. Um, you know, Mike has had a view of how he wants to treat this disease, and I think most of us would have maybe taken different decisions, but uh, he's lived out his life the way that he um, he wanted to do it. And, um, you know, sadly, uh, it was sort of inevitable that with his treatment choices, he would get to this stage pretty quickly, and, and he has. So um, let's let's move on. Um, let's go to um, to Eric, who, um, despite his advanced disease, is enjoying the uh, fun and sun in Puerto Vallarta. Is this true, Mr. Bookbinder? Well, it would be nice if it was true. Unfortunately, we have the tail end of a tropical storm and no. um, it's been overcast and raining most of the time. Oh no, you should have come to Arizona. <laughs> yeah, I should have stayed home with 95 at home. Yes, I heard. <laughs> oh man. Okay, how's the food, how's um, the food at least, Eric? Oh, it's good. There's seven restaurants here, so um, plenty of variety. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've eaten it five of them so far, and we're here for two more nights, so we'll probably hit the other two. And um, so let's see, as far as um, my disease is concerned, I got infusion right before we left, and then they, because of being gone, I had to push back the next infusion a little bit. Um, so I, you know, I'm getting carboplatin and um, uh, lots of drugs for pain and lots of um, Steroids make me look like a chipmunk, mm. and um, so um, overall, the, the pain has been tolerable, um, uh, pretty pretty much controlled. Um, but you know, I'm 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 hoping that um, to get additional treatment when I get back. Um, I have another trip planned, and my wife and I were just talking about it, and we'll probably cancel that because I don't want it to interfere with the treatments. So um, overall, as I say, it's been pretty good. I still have a lot of um, physical symptoms from the um, tumors interfering with my spine. I get kind of electrical shocks and other odds and ends of things that you know are aren't where <laughs> they're all in the spine, but they you know the body says it's someplace else. And um, you know I. I um, now, you know, up to like 22 different pills a day, but um, overall, um, you know, I'm, I'm tolerating everything. I, I have, at, from, the, from the treatment itself, I, I don't think I have a single side effect. So that's been really good. Um, so uh, I'd like to start on, uh, what's it called, the bazitaxel? Right. And um, uh, the, the oncologist um, was very hesitant because of how sick I got on docetaxel. So uh, if I stay okay on this one, I think she'll, she'll start the other. I'd like to, to aggressively treat this. It's, um, you know, it's awful dangerous where it is. And, um, you know, anything goes wrong, you know, then, then I'm paralyzed. And right. So, but they will start radiation um, when I get back. So that, that's starting on the second. And um, they're gonna do 10 sessions. Um, with specialized equipment at, at UCSF, and um, they tell me they won't they won't injure my spinal cord, but everybody knows about backs and anything near the back. It can, it, any, anything that can go wrong will. So um, I, that's that's you know what I'm looking forward to, both positively and negatively. Um, Eric, how are you? I think that's. A, a, how are you going to get back and forth between um, Arinda and Mission Bay? Um, my stepson's living with us now, and, and he can drive me, and I've had other offers. Okay. Um, okay. They told me that I could just drive myself, though, and they said they have an arrangement with the emergency area. 
so it's not Mission Bay. It's at Parnassus. Oh, okay. And so um, they say it only takes about 15 minutes. So you pull in and you tell them where you're going, and and they let you park in the emergency um, area, and you know just run run downstairs and, and get it done, and then come back up and get out of there. So it sounds like it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Well, um, somebody doing some major surgery there. Say that again. Oh, there's lots of background noise. Oh, okay. Um, so, and that starts on that starts on the second uh, second of October. Um, okay. Well, we first of all, I'm I'm really glad you sound so much better this week than last week. So, I guess we're all happy to hear that. Um, hopefully. You're, you're a little less swollen than you were last week, and you're you know more adapted to the steroids. Um, and um, you know my my only thought, and I don't even know, but maybe I would want to discuss this with your with your um, with your chemo um, doc, whose name I finally wrote down, Doctor Dolazal, um, is whether. He, whether to start that Jeptana on a reduced dose, just to see, sort of, to titrate you onto it. What do you think? That sounds like a good idea to me. So you know, it might just be worth raising raising it with her when you go back, and and just go on gently and see it, and just like she started you without it, you know, just maybe do a third or a half dose. She, she would know how to dose it, but it might be a way to go, just to ease yourself onto it. Sure. When when I have when I get to go see her at CPMC. Right. 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 Is that where you you have to see her now at CPMC? You can't see her at um, at Alta Bates anymore. She's moving. At the end of October, she's moving. Oh, okay. That's 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 a pain. Well, but you could probably still get your uh, infusions at Alta Bates, couldn't you? Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Um. Anyway, anybody like to anybody want to check in with 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 Eric? This is Jake, Eric. I just want to say we're all rooting for you. Hope everything is, works out for you. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. Okay. Um, so safe trip home, and um, you know we'll 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 hear from you next week and. Like Eric, like Jake says, we really, we truly are. You know, you're in our thoughts, our prayers, the meditations, and you know, we're sending you all the strength. and And I'm encouraged that you sound so much better this week than you did last week. So, um, so that that's really good. So, say hi to Gail, and um, and and easy on those margaritas, okay? Yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah, and and your car's doing your car's doing very well. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> good. I'm pleased to hear that. I didn't want to ask, but thanks. So thank you for thank you for for letting me know. Um, Jay Kruckman, you're up. Thank you. Um, the only things I have, I got uh, blood work back uh, after a four week uh, test, and I went from a point. Two zero to a point three seven. So, uh, doubling time looks like it's about forty days, which has been relatively consistent. Uh, maybe a little more aggressive than it was, but uh, the uh, concerning part for part of this is it took me five days to get my results back, and I ended up getting an email from my doctor's assistant um, telling me that there's a prescription for Casadex waiting for me at the uh, local pharmacy. Mm. So not real thrilled with that. I do have an appointment with uh, Dr. Morgan's up in Chicago in two weeks. So my thought process is to hold off um, and uh, I'm trying to send her all, all my medical information so when we, meet, uh, we can have a good discussion, 
So um, just kind of out there right now waiting. Um, I think I need a new local position of some sort here um, based on those that response I got from, from their office. And uh, I was also a little uh, concerned that I did go through um, Greta's presentation on nutrition and everything else, and I wasn't looking for any miracle cures, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But I did take that very seriously for a couple of months, and it actually didn't seem to do um, a darn bit of good for me. Not saying it doesn't help others or anything else, or maybe it's a short time frame and I'm, you know, not giving up on it, but um, I was very, uh, very religious on it, except for my beer. I, I enjoy my beer and I'm going to continue there. Good. So. <laughs> well, so, 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 so let me, let me just address that one first and, uh, and others will chip in, I hope. Um, I, I don't think that nutrition is a magic bullet. Um, I think it is more of a way of life and a change that you make when you get diagnosed with prostate cancer, um, that you try to change your eating habits. And I, and I truly believe that it, it does help manage the disease, although, you know, that's anecdotal and it's, it, it's based on my experience. Um, and we do know it makes difference. You, you probably read the pamphlet as well as listening to Greta. But um, but I don't see very often, once in a while, when men get diagnosed with very low grade prostate cancer and they become vegan, um, I, I've seen their PSA be managed at that level. But I think for people that um, have more advanced disease, uh, we shouldn't be looking to change our diet in the hope that that is going to reduce our PSA. Uh, more likely what I, our expectation should be is that it, it will overall improve the management of the disease. And if we didn't have that diet, our disease would be moving even faster. That's kind of the way that I look at it, Jay. I mean, I, I, I don't want you to feel like this, that whatever effort you've made has, has been wasted or futile. Probably futile is a better word. No, Rick, I, I am not doing that at all. I mean, from from my former uh, Firmagon Lupron shots and everything else, I put on some weight and I needed to get that off. And I, that, I was very successful okay. in that. So it was not futile by any means, but I was hoping, you yeah. know, and again, you just go for some hope. Yeah. Um, now I'm in better health than I was two months ago, but. Right. Now, a couple of thoughts that I have. Um, one is that uh, in terms of this as a local doctor, um, I suspect Dr. Morgans is going to have some suggestions because she's going to know uh, Memphis, the Memphis docs pretty well since she spent so much time in Nashville. Um, and she's going to know which doc she trusts and which doc she doesn't. And and I think that, you you know, when you do meet with her um, next month, um, that you're that's one of the things that should be on your list to discuss with her. I mean, who, who, who's best to be managing you locally? Um, and it may be that you don't need a local manager. You know, it may be that she can manage you from Chicago and prescribe what she needs and maybe you have to see her once a year or you know twice a year and and um you'll get your blood test done locally and your the blood test will go to her you I mean obviously you can't get your blood test done at northwestern but that that might well work and you might not need anybody locally whilst you're in this stage no uh, and that's very, that's very true so i'm i'm just kind of in a little bit of limbo for a couple of weeks until i until right. i meet with her and you know, again, I don't, we, 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 we don't really give medical advice, but I think I'd do exactly what you are doing and I would hold off on the case of X until you speak with her and see if she thinks that's the best thing to be doing right now or not. I mean, it's not a bad suggestion, but if she's gonna manage your disease, then let her manage your disease. 
I hear that. Um, I, I, That's all I hear. I have not heard back, and I have to write to him. I haven't heard back from um, from Les um, Pachi, who did see her, um, I think, last week. So I don't know how that went. I keep thinking I have to write him, but as Jim Cameron knows, uh, I think about things and I don't always get to do them, but, but I'm working on it. So I'm making a note here, write Les B. And if I hear any, if I get any feedback on his, his appointment with her, I will let you know. Um, I also noticed, are you, um, are you on our Facebook? Um, uh, do you follow us on Facebook, Jay, or not? No, I do not. So at this point, so um, I I rarely go there, but I happen to go there today. Um, uh, Jake, you want to talk about um, about featuring uh, Alicia Morgan's on Facebook? Um, yeah, I just it was it was I believe I found it on it's a link that somebody else uh, had posted. I believe PC, uh, PCF Prostate Cancer Foundation. They they. Uh, they highlighted her as uh, someone who is very interested in prostate cancer and uh, has a family member who was suffering from it. So it was just a good article. Um, I've heard I've heard her name on this call many times. Um, she always seemed everything I've everything I've heard about her is is uh, has been good. So that's why I decided to go ahead and post it. But yeah, just look up answer cancer on uh, on Facebook and you can go and you can see the article itself. So w what I think it was was 10 women um, professionals, medical professionals in the field who were um, who were recognized by Prostate Cancer Foundation for the work they've been doing and, and many of them have uh, family members who, who have prostate cancer. Um, I think I think I bookmarked it. And so I think I can probably put it in, but that doesn't excuse anybody from not following us. So um, I just want to make that point, um, especially since, uh, since uh, Jake does such a great job uh, po posting stuff on there. Um, let me see. I'm pretty sure I put it here in doctors. I think I have. Finally, the money, the money I've been paying you to, t to say that, you finally come through for me. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was duly noted by me. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'll go ahead and find, I'll find a link for you, Rick. You I'll go ahead. I think I've got it. I got it. I'm just. Oh, okay. I'm just. I put it in the window right, right there. Um, and I just. There you go. So, uh, so you can. You, you'll see. All right. So, um, anybody else want to say anything to Jay or to talk to Jay about? Um, about where he's at right now or this issue with with lax local urologists and how to deal with lax local urologists well i just i have a comment i mean if if you decide to go with the case of Dex, and I, I agree you should wait and talk to your to your you know to your new doctor but if you decide to go with case of Dex, it's uh, you know one good thing is very cheap um it's generic um I was on it for a year, and it did work. Um, didn't have too many side effects from it, other than I lost my underarm hair. Uh, so, yeah. I'm one other thing, um, you remind me. One other thing is that some men, when they go on anti-androgens, um, if they think they're going to be on them for any period of time. Uh, will get a single shot of radiation to their chest to avoid gynecomastia, which is a growing, which is um, a, a a growth of your uh, uh, of your breasts, and right. it is a pretty effective way to manage it. Um, and it is it is very benign. I mean, I've actually speak because people have said, oh, you know, there's heart risk, and, and I've I've actually spoken to cardiologists about it they say you know that it's nothing don't even worry don't even, that shouldn't even be a consideration is what the cardiologists have told me so if you if you are going to go on there particularly if you're trying to get rid of weight and you know you you you've got some weight in your chest already um then just 
think about a single shot of radiation to your to your chest. Discuss it with whoever your medical team is. Um, it might be something if you go on case of X that you want to put on your list to talk to Alicia Morgan's about uh, Jay. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on unless unless anybody has anything else to raise for Jay. Um, Mr. Cameron, how are you doing since right when we talked on Friday, you just had, you were flying on your steroids and you had just had your first dose of Taxol and how are you feeling and, and fill us in? Well, we flew real well uh, Friday and uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Matter of fact, Sunday I even went out and played nine holes of golf. Wow. Fantastic. But uh, yesterday afternoon, we came, crash, we came crashing down. We spent the better part of the rest of the day in the bathroom. Oh. And uh, today I'm just like worn out and, and, and tired and sore. Mm -hmm. Was it nausea? Was it diarrhea? What? Well, no, I had I had I had no I had diarrhea yesterday. Today I'm just I'm just beat. Okay. You know my I'm sore all over, but I have rheumatoid arthritis, so I'm sore all over most of the time. But this is you know more more intense. I know it's more intense. Right, right, right. Um, I tried to go outside and take a little walk, but I could only go a few hundred feet and. I say I'd better go back in the house. So, of course, it's 90 degrees down here too. Right, but more more power to you for trying to do it. I think that that really kudos to you for at least having it on your mind. And and I'm I'm also thrilled that you were able to go out and play some golf. Um, although you know possibly next time after the next session you might want to hit some practice balls rather than going around the golf course. <laughs> Well, the problem with, with hitting practice balls is, with the tumor where it is, I have a hard time standing. Remember with my back? Oh, right, 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 right. I'm, I'm playing. I hit a shot, jump back in the cart, and drive, you know, up to the next shot. I see. I see. The only thing is, I'm losing. You can hear me. I'm losing my voice for some reason. Okay. I don't know if that's connected or not. Well, we'll ask the guys in a minute who have done who have done chemo whether that is a side effect or not. But I would report that back to the chemo nurse and 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 talk to her about it because it may be. Yeah, I'm keeping I'm keeping a I'm keeping a log here of of, of a little log. So when I go back there Friday, I'll have everything written down. Okay. Uh, but, um, but no, I mean th th this isn't a, a wait till Friday. This is. Uh, this is something for that for the uh, for the for the chart for the my chart. You send send her a note and say, you know, this is what happened yesterday. This is how I feel today, and I'm losing my voice be because it may be that you have a bug from something else. We don't even know. Maybe you got yeah, well, some I'll, stomach I'll, bug. I'll, actually, they told me to call. Don't use my chart. They they'd rather speak to you in person. They said. Okay, we'll do it. So tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning when I get up, I'll, I'll give the nurses a call over there. Okay. Um, and and have you been drinking plenty to put all those fluids back into yourself? I've been drinking Gatorade and water like crazy, Rick. Okay. That's what we want to hear. That's what I, I, before I forget, Rick. So it, you, you know, we saw those forms the other night. I was shocked when I went on the, when I went on my chart Friday night. In the, in the, in Gunter sent them out. Gunter sent them out. Right. Yeah, but that was because you prep, you pushed. So let's tell that story. That's a really that that that's a that's a really good story. I'll start it and you can finish it. Okay. All right. Go ahead. My um, voice is fading here, so go ahead. So, um, for those of you who haven't um don't recall Jim's situation. About um, four or five weeks ago, I was driving back from San Diego. He called me in the car. I was on eight uh, on on Interstate eight, and he said, "You know, I just got a strange 
diagnosis and it looks like it's kind of serious at least they're telling me it's serious and it's uh, they said that this little tumor that they've been kind of following that's on and around my prostate is is spindle cell he said what do you know about spindle cell i said never heard of it and uh, in the last four weeks um i've i've gotten myself a bit of an education on spindle cell um it is a a very rare um uh cancer um and i think it can emerge from uh, in in many different um in many different types of cancer so it isn't peculiar to prostate cancer um the cells are kind of skinny and long and um in Jim's case, it probably arose as a result of the radiation which Jim had back in 2006. So it's it's kind of a secondary cancer coming out of the radiation, but it is also clearly associated with the prostate cancer. So the diagnosis is what's called spindle cell sarcomatoid prostate carcinoma. Um, and what that means is that there are spindle cells and um and non-spindle cells and sarcomas and carcinomas and they're all kind of mixed up together in there but it makes it a very hard disease to treat and we switched jim uh the, the people at johns hopkins weren't too interested um in following through um not that they didn't want to but the guy just kind of waved his hands and and, and now that we have a little more understanding what do you mean, Rick? They just about booted me out the door. <laughs> I was I was trying to be nice, Jim. I was trying to be. I was. I know it doesn't happen often, but I was trying to be diplomatic and politic. I do try sometimes. Um, and um, what was uh, what was interesting that we subsequently learned is a lot of times when you have sarcoma, some sort of sarcoma diagnosis that the doctors um the, the the prostate cancer doctors will flip it over to the sarcoma doctors because they really don't want to deal with it themselves um and that's kind of what we saw was happening at, at hopkins and and so we i gave um jim a couple of suggestions we switched him over to um to md anderson um because they responded first not necessarily because it was a preference because we could have there's also a terrific doctor at, at duke um but we knew we knew that paul corn was 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 very responsive and he was unbelievably responsive i mean he was he was back to us within an hour when when he heard the by email and then we we wrote with him and, and finally we spoke with him a week ago last monday and um and that was one of the most amazing calls I think I have ever, ever had because Paul Korn came on the phone and he said, Mr. Cam, and he said, or Jim, I said, Jim, he said, uh, he said, we're not going to talk about the medicine and the treatment to begin with. He said, I have a question for you. He says, how are you? How are you feeling? How are you dealing with this? And, and I, I was just blown away. I mean, I, to me, when you, when a doctor exhibits compassion like that it just it, it touches my heart um because all of us have too much experience with doctors who don't give a damn especially jim cameron and um his doctor who shall remain nameless in 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 uh, johns hopkins and i really knew... give it to anybody that wants it <laughs> what say that again I said I'd gladly give the name to anybody that wants it to avoid them. Okay. Well, um, and 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 I knew that I knew from previous guys that 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 Paul Corn had treated that that how great he was. Not not just in terms of a doctor because he's an outstanding doctor. He's an outstanding genito urinary medical oncologist. But I also knew that he was a very kind man, and. Um, since then um we've been working together with a local oncologist and this is where we get back to the story uh, paul corn had said on several occasions that um he agreed with what we wrote him that we should get um jim's biopsies sequenced by foundation medicine now jim as well as having this tumor on his prostate also had some liver spots which they biopsied subsequently. 
So we had two sets of biopsies and, and on three different occasions, Paul Korn said to us twice in writing, once verbally, he really would like to see these, these, these sequenced. The problem was that we couldn't get the local oncologist in Venice, uh, Florida to follow on. And, and what he was telling Jim was, well, we'll get to it. We'll do it in a few weeks. Let's just see, let's see how the treatment goes. And we knew that Korn wanted the information. Jim was anxious to find out if there was anything there. And now was the time to do it. And um, Jim and I went back and forth a few times and with me sort of bolstering him and, and pushing him forward, um, he, when he went in for his infusion, he insisted. And, and what it turned out was that the local oncologist really didn't know how to, really didn't know how to submit. And Jim had given him the references and told him where to go to the foundation medicine side. It's all laid out how you ask for it. But basically what we had here was a doctor who had administrative and logistical problems, and that was why he was recalcitrant. And fortunately, he did step up to the plate. And, and, he st and after Friday, by Friday evening, when Jim had absolutely insisted, he did it. In the meantime, I, I was writing to Foundation Medicine, because as you know, we have good contacts there, and asking them, what do you do when you've got a recalcitrant? recalcitrant doctor and it's an issue for them and I'm going to be following through with foundation medicine by the way because I don't think the, the situation with your local guy is 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 singular and I, I really want to push foundation medicine to do a better job reaching out to community level doctors um, who are who, who just are uncomfortable ordering a test like this because they've never done it before I mean I guarantee the next time they that, that somebody asks, your local guy for a foundation medicine test, he'll say, fine, yeah, we'll do it, and he'll do it within a day or so. But um, it's just a really, really good example. Jim, you want to add anything to that? Uh, uh, in, in the local doctor, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, ha has agreed and has sent everything along to Paul Corn. They're, they're cooperating quite well together, I believe, don't you, Rick? Yeah, I do. And, and by the way, and again, for those of you who think are thinking of combining a, a quarterback, Gen Janita Urinary Medical Oncologist with your local guy because you don't live close enough to a, 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 a center of excellence. Um, it's just really, really important to get that uh, relationship established right at the beginning and to make the doctors understand who's doing what. And Jim has made it really clear to Dr. Gonda and Dr. Gonda's happy to go along that his quarterback is, is Paul Korn but he really relies on, on his local doc to, to administer the treatment. And so it can be done. Uh, you've got to get the right docs. You've got to get docs who don't have too much of an ego. Uh, and you've got to get docs like Paul Korn, who are willing to work uh, with remote places. I know some of the docs at UCSF will do that, but then we've, as, as many of you have, have experienced, you, there are other docs who say, no, you, know, you, you, you want to be treated, you've got to be treated locally. You've got to be treated with us, and you can't do that. But but we know it can be done, and, and we have to keep pushing for that because many of you live in places where your only option is a local medical oncologist. Well, in Gonder, in Gonder down here is considered the best oncologist in uh, this area, and you know he he stepped he stepped right up to the plate. Right, 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 right. It took a little persuading, but he did it. Right. And, and, and a lot of pushing by Rick. Well, I, I, it was it wasn't. I didn't push. Do, I've never spoken to Doctor Gonder. I I pushed Jim, and Jim did it for himself. So, uh, you know, I just want to I just want to commend Jim because he stepped up to the plate. He put himself in a in a zone that was uncomfortable for him because he's not used to talking to doctors that way and taking charge of his situation. And he did it, and it was successful. And I know that many of you find yourself in that same position, that you, 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 don't, you don't feel you can advocate for yourself because if the doctor says jump, you say how high, doc. But what I hope that many of you get from attending these calls is that if you do advocate for yourself and you can advocate for yourself, a lot of times it produces results. Uh, from a personal standpoint, you know, I was reluctant to 
you know, alienate the doctor, especially after the bad situation I had up at uh, John Hopkins. Right. Absolutely. But you did it and it worked, right? And you haven't and you haven't alienated the doctor. No, 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 no. He's been well, Friday. He was just wonderful. You know, I mean, he, you know, he, he came in and greeted me, talked to me and everything. And he, he's on board. Excellent. Matter of fact, he's, he even told me he was looking forward to working with MD Anderson for what he could learn from them. Fantastic. Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's that, that's exactly what what we hope to hear. Hey, Rick. Yes, sir. Uh, we we know we saw that paperwork Friday night, which shocked me when I went into my chart late Friday night. Then I sent it down to you Saturday morning. Correct. How do we know where that stands? And is there any way of, of tracing that or anything? It's in process. I already I already got a note back from David Marshak. Uh, um, just gents, just bear with me one second so I can just give this give this feedback to um, to uh, to Jim. Um, let me just see. I should have I should be able to find this pretty quickly. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so he said to me, he said to me today, and I'm in the process of writing back to him, I did confirm that the request is being processed by our client services department. Oh, good. I wanted to make sure it was in the system and being taken care of. It, it's in process. And <clears throat> We'll, um, you know, if there's any, if there's any snags, we'll go back to, to David Marshak and, and we'll follow through. Okay. And I'll follow, I'll follow up. Well, Gondra's not going to be there this Friday, but his assistant will. I'm going to see her. I'll talk, I'll talk to her Friday, see if she has anything on it also. Okay. Okay. All right. So anybody, um, anybody else want to talk to Jim? Um, and w w what about this issue? Those of you who have, like Dennis Career and um, and who have who have done plenty of chemo, have you had issues with diarrhea? Have you had issues with losing your voice? Any of those situations? This is Eric. Um, yeah, I had. Uh, you know, I'm taking all these um, opioids, you know, which causes constipation, and then I knew something was going on because. Um, I got severe diarrhea and, you know, including a very embarrassing night out where I couldn't control it. So um, since then it has calmed down, um, kind of equalized between the um, uh, opioids and, and the, the, the runs. So it, it's, it's pretty even now, but it took, took a couple of days. Um, yeah, it said I didn't have any reactions, but I guess that, you know, presumably that was one of them. You know, it's so hard when you're taking opioids and then you take all this stuff to laxatives to combat the opioids and, you know, right. you go too I know far. Where you are. Go far enough. Yeah, so, but but I think that, that, that that may have been a definite one. And I also did have a little uh, voice loss. My my voice kind of raised up a little bit and um, seemed like I was going to lose my voice. I did not lose my voice, but, it, you know, it was moving in that direction. Okay, that's what mine. Um, that's what mine feels like t tonight. Uh, yeah. Like I'm on. I, I like I had to. I had to the infusion on uh, Friday, so this is day four. When did you start feeling a little better? Oh, uh, oh, about a week. So I'm getting infusion every week, so you know I had nothing the first week. This was the second week, and. Um, you know, I had an infusion the next day after I had the problem, so, um, you know, I don't know what went on, but, but it, as I say, you know, it was just a few more days, and then it calmed down. I mean, he's on, he's, I'm on a three-week, so I'm on a three-week cycle. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm on, too, so, um, I haven't had the third one yet, though, so. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, anyway, yeah, this, I, I think, you know, it does sound like what I, what the problems I had, too. Hey, Jim, this is Dennis Correa. 
I uh, had the dust tackle about a year ago, a little over a year ago, uh, with with the uh, Firmagon and then switching to Lupron. And I also had the issue with my voice. I don't have a strong voice to begin with, but I got kind of weaker and maybe a higher pitched tone for a while. And uh, once I get off the chemo, the stuff, you know, it went away and got my old raspy voice back. But uh, the other uh, issue with as far as the diarrhea, I had started uh, from my uh, supportive care doctor and suggested a probiotic. Uh, and she was very specific with the one that she specified. Uh, and also a magnesium uh, supplement. And Is that I the VM3? Things really helped. Go ahead, Eric. Was the probiotic the VM3 or was it something else? Uh, Vital 10. Oh. Clear Labs, K L A I R E Labs, Vital 10. K, spell that, spell it for me again. I'm putting it in the chat window. K A K L K L A I R E, I believe it is. Just a sec, my wife's running over to grab mine so I can. Yeah, wait a minute, I got to listen to this. And I had to go to, a, there was like a, <laughs> uh, I guess a holistic, uh, yeah, I was right, K L A I R E Labs. Right. And it's called Vital 10. Okay. So K K L A R E Claire Labs Vital 10 was one. Yes, and, and it's and that's I believe that you can also order that on uh, online or uh, I think I tried AOL, but my problem is it's good to keep this thing cool or uh, and I was concerned about it coming in the mail. Yeah. Here in Tucson and sitting in a hundred plus degree truck uh, for whatever time. So I actually found a place uh, locally here in Tucson where I can go in and pick it up. And um, what was the what was the one that that, that um, you recommended, um, Eric? Oh, um, I, I wasn't recommending it. It had been recommended to my wife. And it's like super expensive, and I don't know. It's um, it's it's not the one I take. I just take the uh, yeah. It's a fairly generic one. Okay, but and what, it seems to help. What I hear you saying is that it's not a bad idea when you're going through chemo to take a probiotic. Is 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 that would that be your fair summary? Oh, absolutely. Okay. It, it helps restore your gut. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to talk to them tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that. That's not something that I mean it makes sense, but it's not something we've ever discussed before. And so you know, it's a great thing to learn and and something we can suggest to other men that are uh, that are going through chemo. Richard, what about your experience? Yeah. First of all, as far as the chemo goes, when you do, when you do chemo, you usually get a lot of steroids. Uh, we, MSK usually gives you dexamethasone for a few days before, a couple of days before and a couple of days after. I did, really, I, did that, I did that the day before, the day of, and the day after. Right. And you feel, it makes you feel great and you feel wonderful. Uh, so you can go out and play golf and for a couple of days. Till the dexamethasone wears off. Yeah, wore dexamethasone off today. wears off. It, it takes a little while to get out of your system. When it wears off, then you feel terribly tired. And so for a few days now, you feel very tired till your system gets rid of, uh, overcomes that. So I would say that. If you started the day zero is uh, uh, the chemo day, then for the for the next three days till day three or four, you feel wonderful. Then you'll feel bad for another 
for three days, and then you'll start. It'll start. You'll start picking up again. Uh, uh, so you 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 won't feel as fatigued the the days after. A week, a week after, you won't you won't feel so fatigued. So I would say first three days you'll feel great, and then you'll feel fatigued, and then you'll feel uh, start start uh, overcoming the fatigue. Okay, that's good to hear because today today I hit bot today I hit bottom as far as energy. You know, moving was a was it was an effort. Yeah, that's because you got you did away with the the dexamethasone and you you've come down and you you're hitting a, a, a low point on that. Well, hopefully, and, hopefully, uh, but uh, so well, today's it, Monday or Tuesday. Be. Hopefully by Thursday I'll feel I'll start feeling a little better. Now that's uh, the way it goes. A week after you'll be fine. I have a question. Um, are any of you have any of you been on prednisone? every day whilst you've been getting your chemotherapy i am on prednisone every day okay uh every day during the chemotherapy so i've been on it for uh six, six eight months right uh, nine months now right. and uh then they then they give you the dexamethasone right. uh right around the right. You know, the day before the day of and the days after uh, 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 chemo, and then they take that away. But you're still on the prednisone. Right. So some people get prednisone during chemo. Some people do not. Um, I mean, I know Richard is 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 somebody who did. Um, there's another guy that I know who's on chemo right now who's getting it. But there are a lot of guys like Jim where they where they, they don't. Uh, prescribe daily prednisone. I'm not exactly sure um, why, um, what the difference is, but I do know that uh, um, that some guys do get it, and I've talked to Jim about um, maybe discussing it with his doc. So Jim, there's there's a situation at Memorial Sloan Kettering where somebody is getting it, although um, Richard is getting carboplatin along with his. Um, uh, Along with his, uh, uh, are you getting docetaxel or cab uh, cabazitaxel, Richard? Docetaxel plus carboplatin. Plus carboplatin. And you know, again, uh, that's good for you to hear, Eric. Eric, have you ever been on daily prednisone during during your chemo? Yes, um, I was on daily prednisone, and I was, and I did that routine of the dexamethasone the day right. before and the day after. Right. After. Right. Yeah. So and then then back to prednisone. Currently, I'm on uh, dexamethasone, a decadron. Uh, right. Four in the morning and four at night every day, and then and then double that for for the um, trans, trans, um, infusion. I mean, I will say I, you, you, the swelling. I mean, I can see you now. I couldn't see you before, but swelling is way better than last week. You look like Eric again. And <laughs> not like not like a chipmunk. <laughs> so that's uh, hi. Go ahead, Richard. Sorry. Uh, no, it's La it's Larry Fish. Oh, Larry Fish. Uh, Larry. You know, yeah. You know, one thing I was able to do when I was on uh, the um, the chemo was convince my doctor to give me a a script for two milligram uh, dexamethasones, so I could taper myself off a little when I started to get that horrible fatigue. So I could take two to make four milligrams and then like the, the for two days after, and then I could take two milligrams, two milligrams, and then, you know, switch to zero because I really did have horrible fatigue. It helps a little bit, but of course it's delayed coming off it. Just one idea that I discussed, my doctor to give me those. Right off. That's a, that's a great idea to titrate off it, and you know I haven't heard anybody else do that. But um, Rick, Larry, were you on prednisone um, on the inter every day? No, no prednisone. No, no prednisone. So you know, there you go. If you're not on prednisone, which is going to pick up that slack, um, maybe you want to talk, Jim. Maybe you want to raise either daily prednisone or titrating off of the dexamethasone. Jim? 
Did we lose? Did we lose Jim? <coughs> I think I think his wife called him away, so uh, I'll review that. Here. Oh, did uh, you, Jim? Did you hear that? What we were just? No, no I didn't. Okay, so a couple of people have said some guys are on uh, prednisone um, throughout, which is something we've talked about. You might want to talk about. And Larry Fish just made a great suggestion. He was not on daily prednisone, but he asked his doc if he could get some low dose dexamethasone and he could titrate off. So. He was taking small doses of dexamethasone when he started to feel the fatigue come on afterwards. And so he just eased himself off of the dexamethasone. So he just weaned himself back off it. That's right. A little bit. Yeah, I can't remember exactly the dose I got the day after uh, with the chemo, but I think it might have been 20. And then I would get like a prescription for, two, for a bunch of twos. So the, I'd wait a day, and when I started to feel fatigue, I took like four, two in the morning and two in the evening. And then the two days after that, I took two milligrams and two milligrams, and then I tried, and then I stopped. And so I sort of slowed down the, the fatigue, because I really got hit with deadly fatigue. And you still go through it, slowed it down a little, probably. Uh, so anyway, that was just an idea I wanted to throw out. It's a great idea, and Jim, um, it's another issue. It's another thing to put on your list. Yeah, the list is growing. The list is growing. So you've got, you know, either daily prednisone or weaning yourself off, and it's something that's worth discussing. And you know, you've heard the guys. I'm going to move along because I want to give John and I want to give Sherry a little bit of time. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you for the time. It's a pleasure. Um, and Sherry, tell us what's going on with your husband and. Fill the guys in on your husband first, because some of them may not recall, and tell us how you're doing, how he's doing. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I was not going to talk, so I don't have my dates or anything in front of me. Um, and John's not here right now. <laughs> he's okay. left the room. Um, <clears throat> but the last time I was on this call, we were on the call. I had mentioned that we thought Lupron was beginning to fail. And he did have um, um, two rises in the PSA. So the doctor took him off of Casodex. He has had three Lupron shots. He gets them every three months. Again, I don't have my dates in front of me. Okay. And he wasn't on Casodex at all. We know this is um, going to be... I don't know how long this will last, but the last, we go in again in two weeks. So three months ago we were in and his PSA was at 0.1, the lowest it's ever been since he was diagnosed 16 years ago. Wow. And he was complaining of some low back aches and um, he has degenerative, because of the degenerative stuff in his spine and that's always a worry every new ache and pain but he had some um tests and everything was normal no new lesions so i just feel pretty blessed right now i don't know when the treatment's going to change um but the doctor is very optimistic that there's stuff out there that will help manage john for hopefully a while longer quite a while longer Absolutely. I mean, I mean, there is a lot of stuff out there. And, um, you know, I think, guys, that um, or ladies and gents, what you're hearing is somebody who, who did benefit from coming off a case of Dex. I mean, all too often we hear about guys whose doctors take them off of the case of Dex, hoping that they'll get a response and they don't get a response like Jake. Um, but there are men who come off a of case of X and they do get that um, they do get that boost from it. And that's what happened with John Streslek. And, and that's really great. That's really great. How's he feeling in himself? Pardon? What did you say? How is he feeling in himself? He's he's you know, we sit around hoping this is gonna last. Um, our our new issue now is John was diagnosed with AFib and um just out of the blue 
and we're on a drug called Eliquis. It's a blood thinner and anticoagulant. And if, for example, the next thing he has to try is Zytiga, there are many of these cancer drugs that don't mix well with the um, the new drug Eliquis. So we hope we can stay on that drug because that's helping with his AFib, but I'm going to we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We don't have a, any idea what the next step for treatment is going to be, but we know the doctor has, you know, is in the loop of what, what, what he can try. I just don't know. We haven't asked him. So, um, you know, we were talking at the beginning of this conversation with Peter Kafka and, um, He's on intermittent therapy and, and he's off right now. Um, but the issue there is, well, you know, when do you start on again? But, you know, Peter's doing really well. His disease seems to be under control. Um, and even though John's not on, um, John's still on his, his Lupron um, and he's not taking a holiday, if he's down at 0 0.1, um, it's a really, it's a good place to be. And um, like you say, you know, just enjoy that for the time being, get a grip on the AFib, and, um, and then we'll worry about what, what you deal with next. Is he, is he exercising? He's beginning to. Yes, he is starting. Um, yes. He's, he knows he has to, but um, AFib flew him, threw him back a little bit, but he, we just saw a doctor and um, we have an exercise program. He saw an exercise physiologist, so we're on, we're on, we're on that path now. Right, and, and, and you do have to be careful with AFib because I think you right. cannot stress your heart as much as you might do otherwise. So I was just going to say that, you know, be sure that you get the right – you, you get an exercise physiologist involved, so you get all the right, right. exercises. He's got, to, he's got to do that and, exercise. Is he washing the dishes? That's the question. Yeah, yeah. And luckily, you know, luckily, Rick, he um, well, he just read an article on Medscape. It had a not a real good article about Lupron and heart disease, right. <clears throat> and um, he's under under the care of a cardiologist, which is another blessing with the AFib. He's had every test in the book, and his, his heart is as strong as it can be, so he'll be followed with that, too. Good. Good. So, yeah. Does anybody else on this call have heart issues and doing hormone therapy? Nope. <laughs> there are some guys, because I know we've got, I just don't remember who they are, but I know that we've got some guys who have had heart issues um, either before or during their time on, on hormone therapy, but we don't have anybody today. Um, I, I think the jury's out on that, Rick. You know, some studies say there are, you do get heart issues from uh, ADT, and other ones say that there's not much of an effect at all. So it depends on what study you read. And our oncologist um, kind of said the same thing. He said, here's what this is about. And he calmed our nerves. That's all we need right now. We just, <laughs> just need somebody to say, you know, this is how I read that study. And, and we trust him. Right. I think, you know, I don't think I, I saw the study. I don't think I read it because, as Jake says, there have been so many studies. But I mean, I think the one thing that we do know is that um, the, the hormone therapy, ADT, um, definitely has a metabolic effect. So, um, you know, it is going to increase your levels of cholesterol and, and it is going to increase yep. your levels of sugar. And all of those things are not necessarily good for your heart. So, yep. um, you know, th there is some impact, but, but, um, as, uh, and that's why we always encourage our people to, to exercise. Jake. Exercise. Well. Yep. And I think the routine screening is important to <laughs> cholesterol and the glucose. So thanks for asking. Thanks for asking, Rick. It's good to be live this week. Good. Yeah. We're, we're delighted. To, we're delighted to have you and say, say hi to John. How are those? How are those badges looking this year? I don't follow them. I'm a pa I follow the Packers. Oh, oh, Badgers are doing okay though. Badgers are doing okay. They are doing okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yes. 
right. Rick? Yes. Who was that, that that said the other week, uh, I forget who it was, talked about Sam, S-A-M, Staten, Aspirin, and Metformin as, as a good uh, regime to yeah. be on to, to address the uh, the metabolic effects? Who was that? What, that? It was one of the doctors on one of our calls, I thought. Duffy oh, Myers. Oh, yeah. Duffy. No, it wasn't, wasn't Snuffy. It was Moyad. somebody else. It was somebody that. Snuffy Moyad. Moyad, Moyad, yeah. Part of that regimen, though. He's been oh. big on it for years. Well, Mark Moyad uh, supports that. Uh, he calls it SAM statin, aspirin, and metformin. That's metformin, right. all, all, okay. All of which address the metabolic syndrome that, or the metabolic issues that you can get from ADT. Thank you for reminding us, Jake. Very yes. good. Okay. And hey, Rick, I have a question for you. Did you ever find out if which statin was the better one for the guys? Is it Lipitor or Crestor? Crestor. Crestor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm going to get John to switch then. And good thing it's generic now, so it's very inexpensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can eat grapefruit with it. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'm going to tell him that. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And if he's if, if if he's nice if he's nice to me and comes down to Arizona, I could even give him a bag of grapefruit if it's the right time of year. Never know; he might be there. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for talking to me, oh, and this was a great discussion. Our oh, pleasure. Our oh, pleasure. And I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, Sherry, but the Bears will beat the Packers Thursday night. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. I hope not. It'll be a good game, won't it? No, probably not. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't Run know. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, boy. We, who, who knew? This could get worse. Thank God we don't, we don't have Baniskas on the phone because we could get the Vikings into this mix, and then we're really in trouble. Right? Yes, we are. Yeah, yes, we are. <laughs> We get the Vikings into the mix with those Packers and those Bears, and then, you know, we could have a war oh, on this call. We could throw in some politics, too, couldn't we? <laughs> We're not going there. No. We're not going mm -hmm. there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Okay, well, good talking to all of you. And, I, I, John, I'd love to hear what's going on in this with this group. I just – I. It, it just gives me a lot of information, a lot of hope, and just the attitude of all of you guys is what I really appreciate. Thank you. And Rick, everything you do, it's beyond words. Thank you, thank you. But guys, just hear, just hear that from, from Sherry, because you know we, we post, as you know, we post these calls, and um, there are, quite a few people that listen to them quite regularly and they get a lot out of the calls. I mean, we had somebody uh, who will remain nameless who took a little pot shot at us recently um, and said something about a new group that's starting up that we actually approve of. And we'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute since we've got a couple of minutes. And he said, and, and, and we don't, uh, we respect your privacy and we don't uh, uh, record the calls. Well, we respect your privacy too, but we also, tell you we're recording the calls and the reason we do it is because there are people that just cannot make the call and who benefit from the information that we um, discuss on these calls and I think we've made the judgment that the um, uh, the benefits are, um, uh, are, are greater than the um, than the disadvantages and so again I you know, and I thank you all for being willing to cooperate with that and knowing the calls are recorded and, and still being and still coming on there because um like sherry said you guys are doing great work for for a lot of people that you, you don't even know about um i, I that, that is a segue into talking about um joel novak's call and um and we have really good relationship with joel novak um he supports us and we support him um his former colleagues may not into that category but we encourage you to participate in joel's call i think it's coming up this thursday isn't that right jake yes he, he sent out a notice but he forgot to put a time in there but i think it's five o'clock uh eastern time i believe 
Okay. Um, By the way, he does he, he does record it. He just doesn't post it. Okay. Um, and um, do, do you recall for people that want to look up that call if they'd like to participate in it? Do you recall what it's called? Um, cancer ABCs. Okay. A, cancer ABC with an S. Okay. Um, hang on, I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, in the box here in a minute. I just got an email from him today. Right, I did too, um, and I, I have it in there. But um, again, you know, I, Jake, Jake participated in the first call. I owe him. Actually, I think I'm going to ask Jake to, to do this when he's got some time, but we need to be sure we get our schedules to him, Jake. Um, are you, can you hear me, or are you? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, great. So it would be if you could and you could make sure that you get our calendar to him because he said he would be happy to post it and, and we and, and you know it, it's good because there are people that can't make the calls on a monday or on a tuesday and joel is outstanding he's a survivor of five different cancers including advanced prostate cancer and he's a highly qualified and excellent moderator and um you know, you, you'll, you'll hopefully get the same sort out of his group as you get out of ours. Uh, it does not conflict with the inner conversation, um, right. which Jake moderates. So, you know, for those of you who want to participate in the inner conversation, you can do that. Um, and if you feel like you want to listen to a little bit of Joel's call, you can. But um, yeah, for, again, for those of you who are online, I just posted it in the box, the, uh, the, the address. Right. And, and for those of you who are not online, I think if you Google cancer ABCs, cancer ABCs, and the word cancer, then ABCs, uh, it should come up. It should right. come up. And if you cannot find it, you can always email me and I'll send you the link for it. So and that gets us up almost to five o'clock. Um, close enough for government work and I have to dash up to Tucson now so um, if we stop two minutes early today um, and since we covered everybody um, I don't think we're we're losing too much um, the next call will be on Tuesday uh, on Monday uh, where are we it's Tuesday the next call will be next Monday at uh, eight o'clock Eastern um, Larry Fish I will try and get hold of you. Send just email me your your telephone number, and I'll call you within the next hour. I'll call you within the next half hour when I get get in the car, and fill you in. Um, and uh, I think that's about it for tonight. Any anybody any last uh, comments or anything uh, anybody wants to add? Okay. Good call, Rick. Thank you. Yeah, great call tonight. Well, thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. All right, guys, we'll be talking to you soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Good night, Good night now. Thank you. Thank you.